Hello, everyone, and welcome to College of Business Week. This is presentation two regarding our Masters of Business Administration. As we're going through the presentation, if you do have questions, we invite you to submit them using the Q&A box or the chat box, and we will handle those at the end. Today, I'm joined by Dr. David Cavazos, who is a faculty member from the program. And at this point, I will just turn things over to him. All right, thank you, Moini. It's such a pleasure to do this again. Uh, hello, everybody. I'm David Cavazos. I am faculty in the MBA program. I'm also the program coordinator. So I'm here to share with you what it is that makes our program unique and what makes it great and what and to hopefully help you all make a better choice, right, as you consider where you're going to go for your MBA, which is a huge decision. Um, so what I'm going to talk about today is I'm just going to give you guys some background about Tarleton in case you're not familiar. I'm going to talk about some of the things that make our program unique, and that includes our the structure of our program, the fact that we're accredited by AACSB. I'm going to talk about what that means. I'm going to talk about our admission requirements, and I'm going to talk about, well, where do our students go after they're done with the program? And after that, I'll be happy to answer any questions you all may have. So looking forward to sharing this with you all. So Tarleton, of course, it's the first I guess the first college from the A&M system, right, were the original ones. Um, what's interesting about Tarleton is it didn't, it, it didn't begin where it is now. It really is a classic example of kind of constant evolution and constant improvement. Um, we started even just 10 years ago, you know, we had a completely different mindset than we do now. Uh, right now, we have incredible growth, not just the growth you see if you go to campus with the buildings, but we have some implicit growth, including more high profile research faculty, more programs, we're developing new programs, our current programs are growing and we're reaching more and more students. Um, so all of those things are great characteristics of our program. But while Tarleton is beginning to look or it does, it looks like your typical big state school. There's certain things about the MBA program that make it really distinct compared to some of our competitors. So I'm gonna get into some of those here in just a second. So first of all is AACSB accreditation. Um, so universities have to earn accreditation based on their research output, the faculty qualifications, the quality of their curriculum, the extent to which they assess their courses to make sure they're at the cutting edge of their fields. Um, and there's different levels of accreditation and different accrediting bodies. We happen to be accredited by the highest level accreditation in the world, where only about 5% of business schools earn that accreditation. So this is the same accreditation that schools like the University of Texas at Austin have, that Texas Tech University has, that Rice University has, that SMU, et cetera. All the big name programs have this accreditation. And when you consider where our price point is and how accessible our program is, as we'll talk about here in a little bit, our closest competitors don't have AACSB accreditation. So while you'll find some programs that maybe are also, they offer 100% online programs, maybe they're relatively affordable like ours are, more than likely they do not have AACSB accreditation. Where do you see that benefit? Well, high-level employers do recognize a legitimate, highly accredited program, um, but you'll also see it in your training, right? The most important thing, right? This is why you get into graduate school to learn, to develop new skills, right? Develop new core competencies that make you unique as a professional and an individual and build on your talents, right? That's why we get into graduate school. We do that very well as evidenced by our ACSB accreditation because the student um, climate faculty ca capabilities, all of those things go into AACS accreditation, as well as, of course, learning outcomes. If students aren't learning what they're supposed to learn in our courses, we don't earn that accreditation. So it really is an important signal regarding not just the quality of our program, but the extent to which it's going to help you when you're done with the program. In terms of what we do, well, we have, a, as we'll see here in a little bit, we have a broad array of course offerings. Uh, we're constantly expanding. We're extremely flexible. For instance, I've had students take independent studies with me because maybe they didn't find the elective they were interested in. 
I've had students engage in research with me as well. And even as affordable as we are, we do have financial aid options for those who, who would like them or who need them. So we pride ourselves in our accessibility. So we're constantly working to really build on that. So what, so what does our program look like? So we have several options. The core of the MBA is that it's a 100% online program. It takes If you're full-time, it'll take under two years to complete. Uh, you can take it part-time um, where you could actually even complete it within six years. So say you're extremely busy, right? Most of us are with our work, our families, it, ho hobbies, etc. Maybe you don't want to finish it in two years. Maybe you have the luxury of being able to kind of stretch it out a little bit and take one course a semester. You can do that. Um, or if you prefer the opposite, if you want to finish it extremely fast, we have a fast track MBA program that is really quick. You just take a series of eight week courses. And in these courses, even though it's fast track, you do everything you would do in the normal one and a half year program. So it is highly compressed. Some students do it, but most don't. And one of the cool things is if you decide you want to do the fast track, but then once you take your first semester of the course and you realize, you know, this is a little much, I, I rather, you know, take it at a slower pace, you could just transition into the full-time or part-time program. So if you decide on one track, you're not set in that track. So we do have that flexibility. I did mention that we are affordable. So the number is, it's essentially $1,300 per course. So you could finish this entire MBA program for, thir for about $13,000, which is remarkably, remarkably cheap. I was just telling um, Wayne that this is more affordable than my undergraduate program when I, in, in the 1990s when I completed it. So it really is a unique thing and it really is a hidden gem because of the combination of our quality, our flexibility, and our cost. And of course, we have been rated by a number of outlets as being you know, top schools. So we have the best value schools. Um, we, there are a couple of other media outlets that have rated us fairly highly, in particular for our online MBA program. So we have a nice contribute, a combination of attributes. In terms of faculty, so I mentioned, in order to get AACSB accreditation, we have to have faculty that are engaged in research, that are at the top of their fields, that are active. Um, if you do not engage in effective research, you're not going to be an effective teacher because you're not going to be at the cutting edge of your field. So in terms of our faculty, and you'll have access to this, we have all of our faculty CVs. So you can see across the board where we went to school. We have a link of our, to our vitas that show you kind of our research. All of these folks, Dr. Goodpasture, uh, Dr. Kellner, Dr. Sankar, they're all active researchers. They're all at the top of their fields. Um, and, the, and the great thing is we're all attached to a course. So for instance, I teach 5380, the strategic management course. I teach all the sections of that course. So students know, okay, when I take strategic, I'm gonna take it with Dr. Cavazos. So I've even have st had students email me a year before they take the course to ask me about the course. So that stability really, really helps us a great deal. Um, and we have a diversity of fields and this diversity of backgrounds. So for instance, Dr. Joffrey, University of Wisconsin, I'm Texas Tech. We have some folks from nearby, Dr. Sen, really brilliant guy from University of North Texas. Uh, Dr. Sankar from University of Alabama, another super nice person. He's in the Fort Worth campus, brilliant guy as well. So we have a great diverse array of professionals that, are, that really care about your success. So what is it you'll be taking? So what we have we kind of have some really great flexibility in that we have a core of classes. They're the core of classes that every MBA student across the world takes, especially from accredited um, universities. But we also allow for two electives and the electives help you decide to, if you wanted to get extra competency in one in a particular field. So say, say you want an MBA, but you have some interest in finance, but you don't want to get a full on master's degree in finance or Maybe you're interested in accounting, but from a management standpoint, not necessarily to be a CPA. Maybe you're interested in statistics, but you don't want to be a programmer, but you would like to manage data scientists. 
for those reasons and for those particular interests, we offer a very flexible array of elective courses, which essentially is you could take two graduate courses from any of our departments. So, so logistics and supply chain management, uh, business law, business analytics, uh, which logistics and supply chain and business analytics, huge fields. We've recently developed an AI class. So we are constantly evolving, um, but we keep that flexibility so that you can focus on the things that you are particularly interested. In terms of the courses themselves, a quick rundown. Um, accounting management is essentially accounting for managers. So you may not want to be a CPA, but if you're a manager, you may find yourself managing accountants. So that course gives you the tools to understand how to read financial statements, to know what financial ratios are. To be a great manager, you also have to be a great researcher. You have to know what a, what a reliable source is and what a reliable source isn't. And you also need to know how to obtain and present the most accurate data possible, whether it's numeric quantitative data or qualitative market information or consumer perspectives on something. That is what our evidence-based decision-making course is. It's an intense course that takes you into a deep dive into writing, research, and really knowing what is reliable and what is not. And I teach that class a lot, and it is a fun class for the students, and I get a lot of comments about just how, how much benefit that course provides. Uh, financial management provides you the, the baseline kind of overview of finance, that includes portfolio management, corporate finance, um, public sector finance. It's also important to learn how people operate, right? As a manager, you might have to motivate people. You might have to get a sense for your organization's culture, the dynamics within that organization. That is our organizational behavior class. You get to understand how people operate in organizations, what motivates them, what doesn't motivate them. And of course, what tools can you apply to motivate and to get folks to be as effective as possible. Then we have two strategy classes. One deals with marketing. So marketing in and of itself is a unique field, right? It's essentially trying to get people to take, to try to change people's behavior essentially, right? Whether it's to buy a product, to obtain a service, et cetera. So there's a lot of strategy behind that. So with 50 through eight, you learn that. In my class, strategic management, you get to learn why some organizations outperform others, what it is that makes some companies special, and what can we learn from that to apply in our careers, in our organizations. You also learn strategic planning and strategic analysis and market analysis. Finally, near and dear to my heart is economics. I'm an economics major as an undergrad. You get to take managerial economics. The cool thing about that class is you get to apply economic principles to make effective management decisions. So it's a great course. When I was an economics major, that was my favorite econ class. And of course, with the world we live in today, information systems are extremely important, right? The technology. So if you think about what you, what you get out of an MBA program, you learn how to manage people, finances, and information, right? Those are kind of the big three things. Um, the, our business 5311, it takes on the information part of that broad management process. Um, so those are our courses. And of course, there are two electives that you could choose from. Okay, now because we are an MBA program, you may require leveling courses. So say for instance, you have a degree in a non-business field that maybe you haven't taken anything in management, finance, or accounting, or statistics. Uh, we do require leveling courses. However, we've had cases where, say for instance, somebody has a nursing degree, but they took a nursing management course, uh, or they took a healthcare statistics course, for instance, well, that could get them waived from our statistics requirement, right? So essentially, when you come into the program, we expect that you have some sort of course background in management, accounting, finance, statistics, economics, and marketing. Those could be from an undergraduate program. They could also be from kind of parallel programs. So say for instance, you have a degree, a bachelor's degree in public administration, and you took a public finance course. That could be a substitute for a finance course. Say you majored in psychology, and you took a statistics course as, as part of your math requirement. That could be waived as, as for our statistics requirement. So we do have these leveling requirements. 
but we are flexible and we do have advisors that look closely at the courses you take. They send them to me and then I get to take a look at the courses and then I get to make a decision. About 80 to 90% of the time we approve them uh, because most of the time it's, it's, it is a course that's closely related. So as you kind of think about your background, keep in mind that you don't have to have exactly management, accounting, finance, statistics, economics, and marketing. You can have related courses as well. In terms of our benefits, so the things that make us special, and I've been emphasizing these, uh, for me, the number one thing, because I think I'm a, I'm a, I'm a first-generation college student. I, I grew up in South Texas from a working-class family. We didn't have a lot of money. Uh, cost was extremely ex you know, important to us, and it's extremely important to most people now. But you also want something that's of high quality. So the, I think that the really the thing that makes us great is that we have a combination of affordability, but it's not at, a, at the expense of quality. You get to get a high, a top tier program degree, a ACSB accredited degree, and an extremely competitive cost. Most of the times at one fifth the cost of competing programs. If you just, even a school like UT Arlington, which is relatively affordable, their program costs four times as much as ours. Um, and we're both AACSB accredited. So which one are you gonna choose, right? So that is really something we do offer. And again, it fits our values of really educating people in order to help them improve their lives, right? So when you want to do that, you don't wanna be expensive. You wanna be accessible to people from all backgrounds, from all parts of the state and all parts of the country. Uh, we don't want costs to be a roadblock. Um, the outcomes of our students, they get key, really important career skills. Uh, we have several success stories of students that have done a lot with their MBA. I get feedback from students that, you know, it was a really great decision because you get to advance in your career without, you know, by, you could literally charge it on a credit card, right? That's how affordable it could be. So it is really something special about our program. And of course, we're extremely flexible. You could take it as quickly or as slowly as you need, depending on your life circumstances. And if you decide on a path, if you decide to take it slow, but then find, oh, now I could, I could speed things up we could accommodate that or vice versa. If you start quickly and your life changes and you feel like you need to slow down a bit, we could accommodate that as well. So admissions. So we have the GMAT GRE are waived. So that's a really great thing. So it's a really good thing to take advantage of. And that's one thing that a lot of our competition doesn't do. Those that do waive it for the most part are not AAC is accredited. So that's a nice thing that you don't have to worry about because having had to study for the GMAT it's, it takes up so much time, and it's really nice to not have to worry about that. Uh, we do have a minimum requirement of 2.5 GPA, either cumulative or in your last 60 credit hours. Um, if you have a 3.0 GPA or higher, you get full admission. 2.5 to 2.9, you get conditional admission, which means you have to sustain uh, a GPA over two consecutive semesters of 3.0. Um, well, another cool thing about our classes is that we offer them year round. Um, we even have a mid-semester session and we offer, so a full semester class for us is 16 weeks. Most of our summer courses are 10 weeks. Throughout the year, we also have eight week courses and we even have a couple of five week courses, which are pretty intense because keep in mind with these shorter form courses, you still cover everything that you would cover in a 16 week or a 10 week course. Like there's no, there's no compromises and there's no cutting corners, even if it's just a five week course. You just have to work almost about triple. You do triple the work that you would do in a third the time as you would in a 16 week course. Um, we do have a $50 processing fee and we have a, a short essay requirement where you address why your why you are applying to an MBA program, what your goals are for pursuing it, and that's a short essay requirement. So these kind of this kind of outlines the general requirements for applying. If you're international students, uh, we do have. There is a requirement that if you're an international student, that you have some face-to-face -face courses. We do offer them on Fort in Fort Worth. 
If that's not possible, because of course some students take these classes from their home country, we do have a live Zoom option that counts for some students for that kind of face-to-face -face requirement. Uh, most of our courses, while being online, they do have live sessions. Like my courses have a lot of live sessions, so I, I make sure my students know who I am. So we do try to replicate the being in the classroom experience as much as possible. So we have, you know, we have plenty of live sessions uh, where students could come together, ask questions, and also get into discussion. Um, but we also use that to accommodate, say, students that are on GI Bill require some face-to-face -face time. Live sessions count. But we also have some actual face-to-face -face courses at our Fort Worth campus if you're interested in mixing things up a little bit. Um, you could start any semester as well. And if, for more information, because there is a lot to being an international student, please see our Office of International Studies linked right here. All right, and success stories. I won't read these in detail, but I will say from my experience, I've had students who took our classes, who took our program, who say took my evidence-based decision-making class and then decided that they wanted to get a PhD because they loved the writing and they loved learning about research and they loved the data part of things. We have several instances where students have advanced to a C-suite level work. Uh, we've had students that have engaged in heavy public service um, a lot of our former students advanced in their existing jobs. Some of them have even taken on new careers. So really, our degree is that you could do so much with an MBA, and in particular ours, because one of the key things about our program is you don't have to interrupt your life to obtain it. You can maintain your current role in your current organization and get your MBA. So you, of course, you have the option of continuing to learn on the job, but also to learn in the classroom. And that leads to great advancement opportunities in your current organization. But of course, you could always branch out. I have a former student who started off as a healthcare analyst, and then he moved on to be the director of a risk management department at, for a hospital in Houston after he earned his MBA. So he stayed with the same organization, but he jumped like three levels in, in, in salary and job responsibility. So it is a great degree for you, and it's a versatile degree as well. Um, you don't have to be pursuing a career in business for an MBA to be beneficial. And here's just some feedback. Um, so this first one is great. You know, every professor, professor, incredibly knowledge and helpful. So the overall sentiment here, and it's true, you know, as MBA coordinator, I get to see this with our faculty. We are all engaged with our students. Even though we teach online courses, we make sure we know who you are. We make sure you guys know who we are. We make ourselves accessible to you. Um, even if it's an online course, I have Zoom meetings almost every day with students. Some of them just with you know, questions about their careers. Uh, but many of them, of course, questions about the courses. But I think a lot of students, they, they are happy with their MBA experience here because it's, it surprises them that they could get so much for the price and also that they could get so much engagement from their professors from an online course. Because th these online courses aren't the kind of courses where you just log in, do an online assignment, click some multiple choice things and then log out. No, there's discussions, there's video discussions with your professor, there's simulations where you have to work with teams throughout your semester, there's virtual case studies, there's consulting projects. So a lot of the things that you would envision doing you know, with, with highly motivated teams, you're gonna do that in your courses. So it's not a passive degree. Cause I think a lot of times when we think online, especially if you're, I'm a Gen Xer, if you're, if you're in my generation, you always think, well, online, isn't that easier? No, you know, online education is really advanced and at Tarleton, we're extremely good at it. So do expect, even if you engage in this online experience, it's ex extremely applied, it ex it's extremely engaging, it is not passive. So it is, it is a nice experience. And here's just some of our the examples of some of our, our, our recent, sorry, I got a mosquito bite. Uh, some of our recent employers, so GM Financial, Wells Fargo, Charter Communications, we're constantly looking for connections with organizations. So for instance, I had the, C, the director of strategy from Caterpillar talked with my strategy courses. And again, 
we get guest speakers, even though it's online, we have guest speakers. I got the director of strategy from Caterpillar in my capstone class. We're seeking partnerships with them. Um, some of the sample job titles you could expect with an MBA, uh, management analyst is a big one. And that's a broad one that, that goes from everything from a management consultant to a literal management analyst. Uh, project management is huge. And we do have project management courses that students decide to take as electives. So many of our students become project managers, um, finance analysts, any kind of analyst position, an MBA positions you really nicely for that, and also operations management as well. Um, it's a degree where essentially, again, it facilitates your skills in terms of how to manage resources and resources like human resources, financial resources, information resources, and technology resources, right? Those big things. This program will prepare you for that. So for the next step, uh, what I would suggest you do right now, if you are interested in enrolling in the program, so really look at the program, look at our faculty, look at what we've done. Of course, contact us, you know, feel free to reach out to me or our dean, or although our dean is way busier than I am, so reach out to me and I'll respond a bit more quickly. But our College of Graduate Studies, just excellent folks that work there. You can reach them at this email here. Our program advisors are extremely knowledgeable. Um, so what I, would, what I would do now, if you really do want to dive in, is kind of look back at your undergraduate, um, or even if you have another graduate program, look at your transcript and, and think about, well, which courses meet the prereqs, which do not, what would I need to take? Um, get, your, get your essay ready, um, submit your online application, and wait for your decision. But in the meantime, please reach out to folks. We are more than happy to speak with prospective students. Again, our College of Grad Studies here, our program advisors, or myself, we're all happy to, to, to help you out in any way that we can. All right, so at this point, and here's my information, uh, dcavazos at tarleton.edu. Um, if, you, if you would like a copy of the PowerPoint presentations, please snap a picture of this. Um, so you could get to the web page so you can see all this information I just presented. But at this point, does anybody have any questions? Yes, to our live audience members, this is your chance to go ahead and submit your questions. You should see a Q&A box or a chat box that you can use to submit them and we'll get those handled as best we can. In the meantime, I have a few questions of my own for you, Dr. Cavazos. You mentioned that uh, the goal is to try to simulate an in-person experience to the extent that you can. And so you did talk about it a little bit, but I wanted you to elaborate on how the program is actually executed online. Because as you said, for some of us who are of a certain age, we have no concept of what it would mean to be a fully online student, particularly at the graduate student level. Absolutely. Um, we kind of facilitate that process by, well, first, all our courses have the same structure, even if they're different courses. So once you take a couple of courses, you know what to expect. Now, in terms of how we kind of emulate a live session or a live course or a face-to-face -face course, most of our courses are organized by modules which there we you get your you're given kind of the week by week rundown of the things you have to do now within those modules there are always live videos provided by the instruction um, there's typically some live sessions provided by the professor now that varies by professor and by course some courses require more live sessions than others so my strategy class requires a lot of live sessions because they do some pretty intense work with the consulting project and a simulation others like organizational behavior which I've taught as well there's a couple of live sessions spread out throughout the course. Um, that helps emulate that. But we also make ourselves available. So I've had students that say I've been out of, you know, out of college, like I was when I went to grad school, out of college for like 10 years or so, and, you, and things have changed so quickly. We have one-on-one -on -one discussions, you know, with students that kind of feel the need to have that, right? So we, we kind of provide the support for students who maybe feel a little intimidated at first. But the things that help students adapt quickly, because I found that most students after that first semester, they feel pretty comfortable because all of our courses are similar in their structure. They're all organized by modules. 
you'll notice they're, they're all going to have video presentations by faculty. They're all going to have interactive web-based assignments. Many of them will have some live meetings. Uh, most of the live meetings aren't required. So again, we do design these courses for flexibility. Like, so for instance, I record all my live meetings and post them. Um, and we run it through a platform called Canvas, which is our learning management system. It's an extremely user-friendly learning management system that's really conducive to live content, to live interaction. It works on your devices. So you could, you know, if you needed to have a video conference with me through that, you could, we could either use Zoom or we could go through Canvas using your device. Um, and it's an all-in-one package. Like, so through Canvas, with most courses, you have access to all of your course materials, all the video content, all the assignments, it's all there in one place, which makes it extremely convenient. And you can navigate it and get a feel for it. And most of our courses, you know, like mine especially, I always provide these big first day overviews of the course. And we usually have live kickoff sessions where we meet with our students via Zoom and the professor walks students through the course and how it works just to kind of orient students. So we try to provide all the information possible to kind of get students up to speed if they haven't you know, taken an online course. Because yeah, an online course today is way different than what an online course was 10 years ago. It's so much more dynamic and so much more engaging. Thank you for that. So the Dr. Sam H. Pack College of Business offers seven graduate programs. And we have a viewer asking a question that I get asked a lot. Uh, basically what distinguishes an MBA from some of the other graduate programs Perfect. and how does one decide what direction to go? Management a, versus MBA, so on and so forth. Oh, that's, a, that's an excellent question. So, so the, the Master in Business Administration is a classic business degree. It covers all the major functions of business. So when you come out of, when you finish an MBA degree, you understand finance, accounting, management, marketing, all the functional areas of business, you have that broad knowledge of them. If you wanted to seek a more specialized route, so we have a master of science in management that has concentrations in like business analytics, logistics and supply chain. So say you were interested specifically in being a, a data scientist or to be, or going to business analytics. Well, the MBA probably isn't for you, though you could take analytics electives, it's not enough. It's enough to give you the background to manage analytics folks, but to not necessarily be a business analytics person, right? So if you were interested in being a logistics and supply chain expert, an analytics expert, a human resources expert, then you, you take out one of our master of science programs. If, however, you're interested in being a manager of your organization, say like a chief financial officer, a chief executive officer, or just a division manager, a departmental manager, that's what the MBA prepares you to do because it gives you that broad training in all aspects of business. But yeah, Thank really you so much, it. good explanation. So then is it is it accurate to say if someone is needing more flexibility in terms of where they see their career going, would an MBA be a better option than say some of the more specialized degrees? Oh, absolutely. We've had students graduate for the MBA program that become educational administration, administrators, healthcare administrators, nonprofits, of course, for-profit sector a great deal. So it does give you that broad flexibility because every organization know, from government to nonprofit to private sector, they know the MBA and they know that it comes with the functional skills necessary to you know how to prepare a budget but you also know how to write a job description but you also know how to read a spreadsheet and you also know how to read uh financial reports right so you kind of know all of those things which are applicable in pretty much any organizational content context so yeah really great question you mentioned that if people are coming from a non-business background, there are what we call leveling classes that they, they take to bring them up to speed. But I'm just curious, just anecdotally, what, what percentage of your students are from non-business and how do they fare in, in, your, in your program? I'd say about 
it's about 20 to 30% come from non-business backgrounds and they tend to do really, really well because one of the cool things is if you come from a non-business background, all of this is gonna be new to you. So students kind of come in very bright eyed and, and everything is novel and new to them. And, and again, the courses don't require that you have an extreme amount of background in, the, in its field because they all bring you up to speed, but they do tend to do well. And typically most students, you know, by and large, at least in my experience as MBA coordinator, if they do need leveling requirements, it's usually like one or two. So a lot, of, so most of the most non-business degrees, you are going to take some statistics, right? So most, 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 most of the time that's waived. Uh, what I found is most, most students have to take a, most non-business students have to take a marketing class because that's the one that doesn't translate. So even if you're like a poli sci major, you may have taken a public finance course. So that that translates. If you were an econ major, obviously, well, you get the econ done and the stats done. But there are certain programs that that might have marketing in them, but that's more unique to business. So I find that most non-business students, the leveling class that they do wind up having to take is marketing most of the time. And that is a really fun class. And again, you can take the undergraduate version online prior to enrolling. Uh, so we have that flexibility, but our non-business students do ex exceedingly well just because again, it's novel to them and they really dive in. Thank you. Well, not seeing any additional questions from our audience members, I wanna thank you Dr. Cavazos for your time today. This has been an excellent presentation. And I wanna remind our audience members that the recording of this will be available to review on demand in our College of Graduate Studies YouTube channel. And so certainly feel free to go back and review the content as needed. If you know of others who might be interested in the content, we certainly invite you to share the content with them. And we look forward to having you join us for the remainder of College of Business Week. We now have five additional graduate programs to discuss, and we're excited to tell you more about what we have to offer. So thanks everyone for your time. And with that, we can end our webinar. Thank you, everybody.